Suspicion is one of my favorite Hitchcock films. And along with Shadow of a Doubt and Strangers on a Train, it forms a trilogy of the shadow, which informs the darker aspects of the human mind. One of the main resources of suspense is not knowing. The other one, by the way, is hope. They go hand in hand. And not knowing is the motto of this tale, Joanne Fontaine, and by extension, us, we spent the entire picture trying to figure out if Cary Grant is the man we hope he would be or we fear he would be. And that's what makes him perfectly cast. No one wants to believe anything bad about Cary Grant. After all, do I look like a murderer? But it also shows you the doom and darker, more strange aspects of the mind of Joanne Fontaine's character. At the end, which was reshot by Hitchcock, there is an ambiguity that is preserved, and I will not spoil it, but I will say that he uses a resource which is shooting Cary Grant from behind, showing only the back of his head, which he will reuse in the, his introduction in Notorious. And there is a final gesture with the arm that can either be protective or capturing. You decide. Freaks is singularity in the history of film. No one could have made it but Todd Browning, who was at one point himself a carny, and who is uh, full of pity and full of cruelty in that carny heart, who is attracted and repulsed by the depravity of the human soul, and who has this prurient, sweaty, pulpish attraction to uh, images, and an enormous love and compassion for the grotesque. He abhors normality because he knows it masks uh, cruelty and superiority and arrogance. And uh, Freaks is a cagey movie full of edges and that is not an easy watch but it is a very rewarding watch and in my opinion a complete masterpiece. We accept her, we accept her. Google Carl, Google Carl. One of us, one of us. Jane Eyre is uh, the perfect adaptation of a classic. Uh, Charles Brunton's novel has cast its long shadow across things as dissimilar as The Secret Garden, Rebecca, A Word with a Zombie, etc. Uh, it's become almost a template that is used over and over again. In this case, to adapt the novel, you needed to present a film with scope and elegance and absolute precision. And very importantly, cast it perfectly. Orson Welles is the perfect Rochester, and uh, Joanne Fontaine the perfect Jane. Attention must be paid to a youthful Elizabeth Taylor Wrong to hate people. as uh, Jane's best friend. Robert Stevenson, the director of this film, is a great uh, technician and stylist. Uh, he would go on to tackle as the similar subjects as uh, Darby O'Gillis, uh, Kidnapped, uh, or uh, Mary Poppins for uh, Walt Disney but he always exhibited a great control over the technical tools that he needed to deliver a tale. This is, in my opinion, his best film. Are you always drawn to the loveless and unfriended? When it's deserved. I Walk With a Zombie is the second collaboration between Jacques Turner and Bal Luton. They had the common goal to deliver A movies in the genre for a B budget. Luton was in charge of the uh, sort of unit for RKO to create horror movies that were proving to be very profitable. And his collaborations with Turner would exist now as paradigms of what a beautiful, classy, deep, poetic, and powerful uh, a movie can be made even under the restraints of a tight budget. I Walk With a Zombie is basically their Jane Eyre, their most magnificent gothic romance, and it has the attraction, the velvety beauty of shadow and light that a perfect gothic romance has to have. I hope you enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, how do you do? This is Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath is a superb example of Mario Baba. He was a technician of the highest order, but also a stylist uh, of supreme intelligence. Uh, he could uh, make a movie look uh, grand and elegant and beautiful with a very tight budget. He could do that in black and white, as proven over and over again, and Black Sunday remains his peak for that. But here in Black Sabbath, his gleeful fairy tale abandon with the use of color compositions is uh, delightful and eternal. He uses three classic stories to illustrate increasing terror. 
The second one, particularly the third alike, uses the Eastern European tradition that has the vampire coming back to his loved ones to vampirize them before he goes into the world propagating evil. Boris Karloff is absolutely terrifying in it. And the final one, The Ring, contains one of the most shocking images you will ever see. So be prepared. We gotta be thankful for Baba and his horror and for uh, being the cause uh, to naming one of the most popular rock bands of all times. <laughs>